It's a new era in App State women's basketball as Alora Sharp is the new head coach of the ladies in black and gold. Hello everyone, I'm Riley Carlson. And I'm Liam Fellman. This is a special edition of Appalachian Weekly News. In just a few minutes, we'll be taking you live to the Mark E. Ricks Athletic Complex for the press conference to introduce the newly named head coach, Alora Sharp. Coach Sharp comes to App State after spending the previous six seasons with Presbyterian College in South Carolina. Despite being the smallest school in all of D1 athletics, Sharp was able to lead the Blue Hose to the program's first NCAA tournament appearance and victory while winning a program best 21 games. Sharp did this by employing a tenacious defense and an unselfish offense. Presbyterian was the number one defense in the Big South, allowing under 60 points a game, while also leading the Big South in assists per game at 13. Sharp led her team on a historical run, entering the Big South tournament as the fifth seed and went on to win the conference tournament. Under Coach Sharp, three of her players would earn all Big South tournament honors, while Tilda Schockvist earning tournament MVP. Alora Sharp began her career at Garden City Community College, where she spent four seasons in which she compiled an 83-45 record and earned he Coach of the Year honors in 2010. Sharp would then spend four seasons as an assistant coach for Southern Miss and Louisiana Tech. Both teams made the postseason in each of her seasons at the program. Last year, the App State women's basketball team finished below 500. Liam, what is one of the keys to improving that record? Well, Riley, I think it begins and ends on defense. Obviously, App State was second last in the Sun Belt in terms of uh, defensive scoring. So obviously, they're going to want to crash the glass. They're going to want to get those rebounds, get those turnovers. And I think that's just the name of the game. It's team-wide commitment. I couldn't agree with you more, Liam. It's just about that time to hear from Coach Sharp, but before she takes the podium, we'll send it over to our AWN correspondent, Hunter Boston, who is live at the press conference. So Hunter, what are the expectations for this press conference today? The sun is shining through the windows here in the Mark E. Riggs Athletic Complex. If I look to my right, I can see Kid Brewer Stadium in downtown Boone. I would say the expectations are hopeful here today. If you look behind me, there is a raucous crowd all the way from App State officials, former and current players for the App State women's basketball team, and some head coaches like Dustin Kearns, just a couple feet away from me right now, actually. You can also see fans, and they are all excited for one person, and that is head coach Alora Sharp. This will be the first time that many people actually see, hear from Alora Sharp because since she's been hired, she hasn't talked much. So everyone's at the edge of their seat, and they're ready to hear from the ninth head coach hired here for App State women's basketball. Some people here might not have ever heard, seen a press conference like this, as the last time that we've done something like this was 10 seasons ago when Angel Elderkin was hired. So hey, we're ready to go. There's a lot of chatter. People are ready. They're finding their seats. They've been filing in for 30 seconds, 30 minutes now. So it's been awesome. So we're going to throw it back up to y'all in the studio, and then we'll be back for we'll be back with the press conference here in just a moment. Liam, so hearing from Hunter there, obviously we're going to hear from Alora Sharp, Sharp very soon, but Liam, kind of expand on how they can help that defensive presence. Well, like I said, turnovers are a big part of that, obviously controlling the glass and an entire team buying on that side of the ball, but I think I want to hear what your idea is for their defensive um, uh, added, like attention to detail. Absolutely. I think one of the biggest things that App State can do is just get taller. They have three players on their team that are all six feet. And uh, that's headlined by Ryland Moffitt, who is uh, le leading the team with uh, eight rebounds per game. And if they just get taller, I think that can really help the, help the team. Uh, but we're going to hear from uh, Hunter Boston, our correspondent down there, uh, <laughs> live with uh, Alora Sharp. We would like to welcome We've everyone here in attendance and watching online to today's press conference to introduce the new women's basketball head coach. After an introduction from Director of Athletics, Doug Gillen, our new head coach will speak, and then we'll take questions from the media members. Hi, everyone. Doug Gillen here in the Athletics. Now, please welcome Director of Athletics, Doug Gillen. Thank you. Thank you. What a crowd today. It's a great day to be a Mountaineer like every day. Um, and it's a great day for App State women's basketball. So once again, thanks everybody for being here. Thanks everybody for joining um, online. Um, super excited that we finally um, are here today. It's been a couple week process. I'd be remiss if I didn't um, at this time thank Angel Elderkin for everything she did for App State uh, women's basketball in my time here. Um, Angel was, thank you. Angel was one of the, um, the coaches that was here when I was here. When I first got here, and we um, we had a we had a lot of uh, good times together. Um, so, anyways, I wanted to also um, special thanks to Jonathan Reeder, 
Erica Chung for um, uh, chairing the process that got us here today. Um, just to give you a little bit about the process, you know, when we were about two weeks out, it took about two weeks, you know, two weeks ago Monday, um, when, when we started this process and we made sure that we really did a national search across the board. Um, certainly would like to thank our student athletes that helped us along the way in the process, so thank you very much. Um, but we took input from a lot of different people and really um, developed our candidate profile. And like we always do here at Appalachian, we really started with our core values and what we were really looking for. And first and foremost, that was academic integrity. Somebody that is going to come in here and recruit student athletes that can compete in the classroom first and foremost and get their degree. We always talk about we win when our student athletes walk across the stage and get their degree and shake the chancellor's hand. That's when we went as an athletic department. Um, secondly, we want social responsibility. We want to continue to be an engagement and pride point for this great university. And so we wanted a coach that really understood that the recruits and folks that we bring into our program are representing something way bigger than themselves, just like all of us. We're representing um, this great university, which is way bigger than us. Uh, thirdly, we want to win, like competitive excellence, and we talk about it all the time. Certainly, we wanted and we interviewed and talked to a lot of folks, but we talked all we talked to were winners. That's what we wanted to bring to Appalachian and um, continue to have folks in here that really, really want to win. Um, we also wanted to find a leader of young women, not, not just on the court, but we wanted somebody that would come in and develop our young women um, on and off the court. And so that's certainly what we were looking for as well. Um, from a recruiting standpoint, we know that we're in this to win the Sun Belt Conference and play in the NCAA tournament. That's why we're here. We have to recruit the talent um, to do that. So we wanted somebody that could recruit that type of talent. Um, in addition, everybody knows fundraising is part of the game. We need somebody that continues and gets the fundraising piece as well. That's really, really important in today's day and age in college athletics. Um, and certainly, um, lastly, we want somebody that really like fit and wanted to be at Appalachian, right? You want somebody that just doesn't see this as some place that they're just going to stop, but they're going to be here a long, long time. And somebody that fits us. And last, lastly, for me, somebody that we really enjoy being around. You know, we're around each other a lot of times, a lot of the time in college athletics um, in various different settings. And so with that, we wanted to make sure that we had somebody that really fit our culture, um, that fit the mountain culture. Um, and, you know, it's the people that make the place. We always talk about that. So we wanted to continue to recruit great people up here um, to the high country. And we did. So we are super excited. Um, after all of that, and it was a lengthy process, um, but we found somebody that literally checks those eight or nine boxes that I just gave you. And I could not be more excited uh, today uh, than to announce to you all um, the next head coach of App State Women's Basketball, Alora Sharp. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. What a great day to be a mountaineer. And trust me, I understand the responsibility that comes with being your women's basketball coach, and I'm so honored. Um, there's only eight other people that have led this program, and I, I just could not be more excited. And I, I think I need to be pinched because it honestly feels like a dream. It is the opportunity of a lifetime for me and for our players that are here today. I told Doug at the end of the interview, the last thing I said to him was, I need someone to take a chance on me and I won't let him down. And I'm here today and I'm so excited to say that. One thing you gotta know is uh, in my life, I've always said that it's the people that make a place. And uh, you know, success has came with me surrounding myself with the right people. And they say there's something special up on this mountain and I've been feeling it since the day I got on campus. I felt it on my interview. I felt it with some of my first phone calls that I made introducing myself. I talked to people like Carol Almond, whose uh, jersey is retired and she's hanging in the rafters and she's so excited and bleeds black and gold. And I love that. I do wanna thank the Board of Trustees and Chancellor Everts and Director of Athletics, Doug Gillen, for giving me this opportunity. And I also want to thank Erica Chung. She has been scrambling around like a crazy person, making sure that I'm settled and situated and I have all that I need. And one of these days, I'm going to give you back your ID card. I've been swiping it all over campus. 
And I, I want to talk about those core values too. I, I think I was really attracted to those. I think it's such a fit for me because I cherish those exact same things. And, um, you know, I, I want to win. And I don't want to win just on the court. We want to put together a program that you are proud of. And first of all, we want to win in the classroom. I, I think that we don't want our players to just get a degree. We want you guys to get an education for life. And we want our players to be able to learn and grow throughout all their experiences at App State and then throw all those lessons learned over your shoulder and walk into life ready, prepared, and excited to crush whatever your adventure is. We also want to win in the community. You're going to be sick of me. You're going to be sick of our staff. You're going to be sick of our players because the only way I know how to live is to grab my knees, plug my nose, and cannonball into whatever my opportunity that's in front of me. And it takes everybody. And um, we need the community to come out and support us. And we're gonna do all we can to serve the community of Boone and serve the community of App that gives us so much. And I'm excited to do that. And I'm excited for you all to fall in love with our women's team. Just like last night I was at a function and I bet four or five people told me that this was the first year that they'd ever followed and watched women's basketball. Now is the time for people to get behind it and why not us and why not App State? The last thing is I wanna win championships. I wanna win on the basketball court. And I think some signature things that you'll see from the teams that we'll put on the uh, court is a resilient spirit. We're gonna fight, we're gonna scrap, we're gonna be the hardest playing team in the Sun Belt. And we're gonna do it the right way. We're gonna do it with passion, a smile on our face. We're gonna put together a game plan to set our players up for success. Offensively, you know everybody always wants to know how are you gonna play on, on both sides of the ball. We wanna be good on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. Offensively, we wanna share the ball, we wanna move the ball, we wanna lead the Sun Belt in assist. We wanna take great shots and we wanna do it all with joy in our hearts. Defensively, not afraid to be different. We're gonna play a matchup zone that people are gonna have a hard time cracking the code of. We're gonna force really hard contested shots and you're only gonna get one shot because we're gonna be great on the defensive glass. I also want our players to buy into their role, whatever it is. I mean, I want the community to come out because they wanna see what the bench mob is doing. Uh, we're gonna have our players that, that maybe don't get in the game. They're gonna be over there, invested, excited, doing crazy stuff on the sideline, and we're gonna make you proud. Honestly, I'm about making memories, creating experiences. Once you get to know me, some things that you'll know that I say all the time is sometimes I'll just kick back and say, what a life. The other thing I like to say all the time is YOLO. You only live once. And I believe in making the most of, of every opportunity. And we'll be a program of player development. Um, the team that you see in November won't be the team that you see in March. And one thing you'll have to know about us is as long as there's season and as long as there are games and opportunity in front of us, we're gonna keep fighting to get better and to grow and, and learn through everything that we go through as a program. I want our players to learn how to handle hard better. I want them to learn how to get through an adverse situation and how to be more than a conqueror and to learn how to overcome hard things. All right, now, fans and community, like I already said, we, we need your support. I want you to become a part of our basketball family. To me, the fans and the community are a part of us, and we want you to feel like a part of our team and a part of our program. We don't wanna be one of those programs where you put your hands in the middle and say family on three and you don't actually live that life. And family is not over, always perfect. We don't expect it to be rainbows and, and easy and unicorns and all the easy stuff all the time. We know it's gonna be hard but we wanna land on the foundation of our family. All right, now, App State students, get ready. I need you all to uh, save me a seat in the student section, and I need to know where those cool black and gold overalls are because I want them, and I'm ready to wear them with pride. 
And one thing with the App State students, we want a part of your experience at App to include memories of being at women's basketball games. We need you, we want you. We want the fourth quarter for our opponents to be really hard to make a free throw. We need to create a home court advantage. I, I know we've got a great elevation and we went at home and we'll continue to do that. So we wanna utilize the elevation, which I'm starting to call home of the rare air. Uh, we wanna use that and uh, we wanna use our students to create that and maybe even make the administration nervous that the court is going to be stormed. So I'd love to create that environment and we need you guys to get behind us. To the women that are here today, I had a blast in workouts the other day. I, I want you to know I believe in you and I'm excited and proud to be your coach. We're gonna make memories. Most of you have one last ride and we're gonna make the absolute most of it each and every day. It's not always gonna be easy. It's gonna mostly be hard, but we're gonna have a blast doing it together. And I'm thankful to be your coach. All right, I'm a person of gratitude, so you're gonna have to blame, uh, bear with me down the stretch here. I've got a lot of thank yous and, and people that I wanna comment on. First of all, to everyone that came today, thank you. You guys are deep in here today, I love it. I, I am so excited and thankful that you all are investing in our program today. It's such a sweet, sweet day for me, but it also comes with a little bit of bitter because I'm closing the chapter to Presbyterian College who gave me the opportunity, who believed in me, and we made history. And I do wanna say to the players of PC, thank you, I love you. To Dee Nichols, uh, our athletic director, who stuck with me and, and I don't know how I would have made it through without her. I wanna say thank you to her. I wanna say thank you to Bob Staten, Danny Sterling, Rob Acunto for believing in me. I also wanna say thank you to all the people who trusted me and hired me back in the day. Joy Lee McNellis, Brooks Store, Bob Larson, Craig Brooks, and to my college coach, and all of my former coaches, you are the reason why I coach today. I've had great role models. One of my favorite memories since I've um, accepted the job was calling my staff. And that's a memory that's gonna be etched in my heart forever because I called them, I shared the news that I accepted the position and their tears and their screams and their excitement was awesome and without thinking twice, they followed me up the mountain and I'm so thankful for them. All right, lastly, my, my family and my hometown. I grew up in a small hometown, Fredonia, Kansas, a few thousand people on a pig, pig farm. Blue collar type of community, it made me the person that I am today for sure. And I have to say to my mom um, and all my family, thank you, uh, my mom, Pat, She's reminded me 19 times to file my taxes since I've been going through all of this and I beat the buzzer, they're done. <laughs> to my sisters, Alana and Alyssa, uh, they've been great role models for me in my life and they are doing, sending me house and properties and, and uh, all kinds of things. They've been doing all my online shopping so hopefully I'll have a home real soon. To my stepdad who's also a coach, he's always believed in me and the last two people, my aunt and my uncle. My aunt reminded me that I moved 26 minutes closer to home, so that's exciting. They're excited about that. <laughs> However, my uncle was the only person who showed a little bit of resistance to the move. He just learned how to spell Presbyterian, and now he has to learn how to spell <laughs> Appalachian. <laughs> I hope I crushed the pronunciation of that. <laughs> so thank you for being here today. I wanna leave you with this. 1999. That was the last time that women's basketball participated in the NCAA tournament. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to party like it's 1999. Thank you. Go app. We will now open it up for questions. Media members, if you could please raise your hand and then state your name and affiliation. Yeah, um, Hunter Boston with Appalachian Weekly News with App TV and 90.5 WASU FM. Uh, first of all, welcome to App State. We're very happy to have you here. And my first question is, you know, you, you've already mentioned it. You got to meet some of the players the other day in workouts. You've seen the film. So what is your expectations for next season? Yeah, thank you, Hunter, for that. 
Well, I think first of all, we have to have standards of excellence no matter what the situation is. And, and I trust myself and our ability to recruit. And obviously we have some recruiting work to do to finish out our roster. We're a little shorthanded right now, but we'll take it day by day. But the expectation will be to win a championship. That will always be the expectation. And we have to set goals and we have to dream and we've got to create a vision for us. And no matter the situation, um, We'll just keep working towards the same thing every day. And we won't always look at the end goal. We'll take it day by day. And honestly, recruit by recruit, hire by hire, person by person, we'll do all of it one day at a time. All right, I got it. I got to ask. So you and Dustin Kearns, <laughs> there was a one-year overlap when you were both a Presbyterian. So I got to ask, you know, how well did you know Coach, Coach Kearns there and did he have any sway in having you here? Obviously, I do know Coach Kearns. <laughs> and he's a role model for me. Um, I don't think I would have made it through that first year at PC without Coach Kearns. Him and his staff uh, were so open. They helped me get situated. They're doing the same thing here. And I said this last night. Um, when Coach Kearns left PC and came to App, and I started following him and started following his program, all of a sudden my social media algorithm changed to App State. So I've been seeing everything and seeing all the black and gold and the, the pride that everyone has in this place is awesome, including him and his staff. And so um, yeah, I can't wait to work with him again and what a role model and mentor and we wanna be just like him. Absolutely. Um, you have some important returners coming back next season. Course leading off Faith Austin, Emily Carver, um, what, what is it about those two that really impressed you, whether it was just watching film or in workouts the other day? Yeah, I think them and, and several of the returners, um, I would have recruited them. I think that they're my style of, of basketball player, and, and they can shoot, they're skilled, and they scrap and, and compete and play with that resilient spirit that we're looking for. David Rogers, High Country Sports. Um, as a former 4-H'er, um, what, what, what life lessons did you learn from pig farming that you brought to the Greenwood Basketball Court? Well, I was a proud member of the 4-H High Prairie Pioneers, I think was my 4-H club. But I think discipline, work ethic, um, not afraid to get your hands dirty and get in the mix of things, uh, the importance of family and camaraderie. When you grow up on a farm, it takes the entire family to pitch in. And I, I, I drove illegally at probably eight years old. Uh, I've shredded a lot of bolts on a combine, and it's crazy that people put 12-year-olds behind a $100,000 piece of machine machinery, but I think pride in my work and creating standards and just resilience because the crops aren't always gr good, and you got to just keep going and have great stick with it. How would you define your biggest challenges in building this program now? Well, I think the challenges are the same almost anywhere. You know, you... A lot of people don't return a lot, and so there's a lot of work to do. But I'm, I'm into making the disadvantage the advantage. I think the opportunity is to be able to recruit and find exactly what we need to plug in each piece of the roster so that we can be successful as, as quick as we can. David Ware, 24-7 Sports. Coach, you've, you've talked about recruiting. Doug mentioned it as well. Obviously, you've got a unique situation coming in because you've just got to restock a roster, and this is not a time of year when recruiting is normal, let's say. But under certain circumstances where things were more normal, what would a recruiting profile look, for, look like for your program relative to high school kids, junior college options, and then the portal, obviously, is a, is a new as, aspect of this that you've got to manage? Well, first of all, this program is not for everybody. It's going to be for women of character, women that play really hard and, and skilled basketball players that are talented. And, you know, our non-negotiables are going to be, do you compete, do you play hard, and are you a good human that knows how to treat people right? Because we want selfless women that are going to want to put winning over their own stats. And so that's kind of the fundamental things that we will look for. But... I, I like the idea of dabbling into each area. Um, I'm, I'm a former junior college coach. I played junior college basketball, so we'll dabble in that ranks for sure. And obviously there's some really good players in the transfer portal that might be looking for a bigger role or a new chance and a fresh start. And I believe in the high school player too. I, I think 
getting them with, with less bad habits and, and able to develop. And I think no matter who we bring in or where they come from, we want to be inclusive and we want to make sure that we're teaching them the values of our program and, and teaching them the standards of, of camaraderie and how we want to do things and uh, just making sure that we're talented. And if, you know, if the shots aren't falling, can we still find a way to win on the defensive end? And that takes toughness. You broached the style of play offensively and defensively a little bit. Could you maybe go a little bit deeper into what your persona is going to look like on the court? What's the personality that fans are going to, are going to associate with your teams? Yeah, well, we're going to play hard. We're going to play with a ton of passion, a ton of energy from everybody, from myself, the coaching staff, and the players. Uh, I think that we'll make sure that we do a really good job of, of being very prepared. And we are going to look well coached. And you're going to see discipline. Offensively, we teach our kids how to play basketball. We don't run just a ton of scripted plays all the time. We want to always have an answer, no matter how the defense plays us. And so we'll, do, we'll spend a lot of time really teaching our players how to play. And we run somewhat of a, a motion offense. It's way back when kind of Bobby Knight and created more in 2024. But I like to teach and coach in actions. So we'll figure out what our opponents aren't very good at defending. And then we'll really lean into those actions in, in each game. And then defensively, I, I talked about the, the matchup zone. And um, it's been something that's been really successful for us. And we've had great numbers on the defensive end all my years at PC. And I know a lot of people think that you can't rebound out of a zone. But we've been able to break all the school records at PC, too, uh, in rebounding, playing, playing that way. And so defensively, it's, it's going to look different because there'll be a game plan for each and every team that we play, trying to take away their strengths and, and figuring out what pace of play that will help us be successful that game. Coach Zach Smith, High Country Sports. Um, so you're coming off of uh, an incredible season with Presbyterian, uh, ended with your with Presbyterian's first ever NCAA tournament win. What um, what are some of the keys to having that success transfer over to App State? Well, I think I've learned a lot in in my six years, and um, I think the the biggest lessons learned is that you got to create an identity and a vision for your program, and your players have to buy in every single day, and you have to continue to revisit that vision every day and making sure that they know and understand what they're playing for every day. But I think, too, everything goes back to recruiting. We, we had really good players that were really tough. And um, you know, I, I think one thing that I've learned about the student athletes here at App is there is some type of blue collar, scrappy, resilient spirit and what a fit for, for our teams. Um, you touched on getting the community more involved with women's basketball here. Women's basketball across the country is coming off of one of the most important years it's ever had. What are what are some of the, um, I guess, ideas that you're bringing to App State for those fans? Well, we want to be creative and bridge the gap somehow, some way between the Boone community. And, um, you know, I was in Charlotte last night. Sometimes it's hard for people to drive two hours up the mountain. So I think it's important to try to figure out where our biggest pockets of fan base and try to get games in those areas. And then just getting out in Boone and creating connections with the elementary schools and finding which pockets and demographics are going to be good for us to try to invite to our games and, and get people to fall in love with our team and just bring in players that people want to be a part of. We have to create what I call FOMO, fear of missing out. And so we've got to do a great job. And, and App State does a great job of marketing the women's basketball program. And so just making sure that we're marketing things that people want to come and connect with and get those dots connected. Awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, here comes the best part of the oh, show. Yeah. The, uh, the jersey reveal. That's awesome. We gotta get this photo off. Thank you. Thank you all. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Go out. Wow, how about that? Allura Sharp, everyone, new head basketball coach yeah, yeah. here at Appalachia State University for the women's basketball team. Yeah. I have to say, I was really impressed. I, I oh love her sense of humor. Yes. I loved how she just tackled Thank the opportunity. It was amazing. I wrote some things down that I wanted to bring up. You know, really, 
just, you know, she said this program isn't for everyone. And she was talking about the players, setting the, the standard for the team and how they're going to win off and on the court. And they're going to work hard. And I think that's really good for any coach. And as well, it seems like she's cannonballing into the opportunity. And I sure hope we're going to party like it's 1999. I hope you all are partying back in the studio. Well, thank you, Hunter Riley. Now that we've heard from Coach time, Sharp, <laughs> what are your first impressions of the new leader of the App State women's basketball program? You know, I'm, I'm really excited. I love the part where she talked about um, Bobby Knight and his motion offense. You know, Bobby Knight established that offense back in the 1970s, and he, was, uh, he actually came up with a whole guide. He was like, this is the guide to the motion offense. And I think it's really cool that she wants to do that because it allows the players to play basketball. It doesn't just, like, you don't have preset plays. You don't have something the defense can just... Um, get used to uh, you have you know you can just go into the motion offense and if it's working for you it can work but Liam you're kind of saying about building a home court advantage what, what do you think you kind of said about that well I think I think it really comes down to getting that home court presence um, you saw it with the men's basketball team this year we packed homes and you didn't see that with the women's program and this gives them something to cheer about this gives them something to feel good about and they can really have this um, ambiance on the home court and that can really will this team to victory and have just this roaring fan base behind them but Riley I want you to talk about when she said they're the hardest playing team in the Sun Belt what is that going to do for them yeah I think being the hardest playing team in the Sun Belt does does a few things it just gives, it just establishes that culture we kind of talked about it earlier where you know she had an 83 and 45 record back in community college when she did that and she's trying to reestablish somewhat of a winning culture here at App State as well. And, um, you know, she she was building something. You know, she did that at Presbyterian as well. Uh, she had a losing record, which doesn't kind of pop off the page, but what you don't realize is she's building something every single year. In 2020, she went 11 and 10. That was her first winning season with them. And then you get back to this last year, they went 21 and 15. They go to the March Madness tournament. They get in the first round. They end up playing against what we know now as the national champion, South Carolina. So I think that that's really important. And, you know, what do you, what do you kind of think about um, that culture as well? Well, I think, I think she really emphasized that it's a whole season-long effort. It's not the same team in March that it is in November. Mm -hmm. These teams grow over the course of the season. You have to learn from your mistakes. Obviously, no team is going to be perfect. And so in her first year as the App State head coach, she's going to really hammer home that this team is built to grow and it's built to succeed all season long. Um, and she also mentioned leading the Sun Belt in assists. Do you think that could be a big factor in winning these games? I think leading the Sun Belt in assists can be a huge factor. I mean, you look at last year, Faith Austin at times could have moments where she, she would, you know, be dribbling the ball a little bit too much. And she wouldn't be passing them all around. And now that happened, that can kind of be a little bit, um, you know, could pass around to play, from players to players. So if you can make the assists, uh, you know more if you can have more assists uh, that can really move the ball around and it, it allows people to uh, get open shots as well I love that she talked about Dustin Kearns as well I thought that was a really cool that she um, was able to uh, you know say that he was a role model and she wouldn't have been able to get through that first year at Presbyterian if he wasn't there uh, what, what do you think about that I just think Kearns is a great example for her um, and he really has shown his ability to to build a program from the ground up. And I think she has the keys to the condo and she can do the same thing. So that will do it from head coach Alora Sharp's opening press conference. All eyes are on Sharp as the Mountaineer, the, as the Mountaineers start their season in the fall uh, this year. I'm surely to. excited. I can't wait to get into Holmes and watch them play. Uh, absolutely. And I hope they can cultivate a uh, cultivate a culture that they kind of similar with what the men's had last year. But like we said, they will be uh, they will be playing in the fall.